Welcome to another Quantum Conversation, brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and I invite you to sit back as we enter the Quantum Realm, that space of the greater part of you. It is your connection to infinite possibilities, infinite potential, and infinite mastery. Today we're talking about channeling, and my guest is a channel. He's a spiritual teacher and a sound healer, and he's been channeling the 12th dimensional non-physical collective known as the Creators since 2010. Now there's a bunch of other guides who are coming forward, and Daniel Scranton is on a mission to help you to channel as anyone can channel. We're gonna learn the do's and the don'ts and the how to's and more importantly, why we should channel. What is this connection? It is to the higher realms and we're gonna talk all about it. Daniel, welcome, welcome, welcome to this show. Thanks for having me, it's so great to be here. We absolutely love this topic and we're gonna talk about channeling, ways that it can come forward. In uh, one aspect, would you say that we are already channeling and we may not know it? Well, yeah, the, the person who plays the violin, the person who uh, is a dancer, the person who's an athlete, a painter, an actor. I mean, if you think about those people that take that um, type of profession to the highest level, there comes a point where they will all tell you it was like it was just coming through me. I wasn't doing anything. It was not by my volition that it was happening. So it really depends, you know, and then there's all kinds of uh, thought forms around that you can tap into that were left behind in the room that you walk into. Um, I've been experiencing that phenomenon a lot lately of just bumping into these thought forms and realizing, oh, they're still there. Um, <laughs> they're still in that same spot. Um, and if I didn't know what was happening, I would think it was just me thinking these thoughts, but these thoughts exist as their own uh, sort of uh, self-aware entities. And they're hovering around and sort of waiting for a host. <laughs> and so, yeah, you're channeling thought streams, thought forms, um, you know, past life selves that you tap into that you don't realize it. Um, but yeah, like uh, people who invent things are channeling and they probably don't know that either, but that energy is being put out there by extraterrestrial life to give us the next piece of technology, the next innovation that we then get to use however we want to use it. But it's out there and that's why, you know, they say, well, who invented the radio? Was it Marconi? Was it Tesla? Who, you know, who invented this? Who invented that? because it seemed to happen at the same time because it was out there and people were tapping into it and then channeling it into existence. So channeling is really taking something that already exists in the ethers and sort of bringing it down, grounding it and making it into something. So when you see a piece of art that really moves you, you know, that, that energy was there and needed to be given form for more people to experience it because not everyone is walking around like an open channel all the time. Very, very interesting. This is where we become conscious of these various thought forms and bumping into the energy. So this is very interesting. That's part of the do's and don'ts of channeling. And so where do we begin <laughs> to discern those thought forms, because this can go deep into egregores that keep us locked in a lifestyle or a belief system for decades, if not a whole lifetime. Yeah, I mean, it's important for people to realize that it's not originating inside of you. You're not broken. Um, these aren't uh, 
the result of chemical imbalances. You know, these are real energies that are around us. And if you, you know, when I, before I became a channeler, one of my uh, earlier um, aspects of my life, I was on a track to become a clinical psychologist. I wanted to work with people as a therapist. And one of the things I learned in my courses at Boston University was about how um, important nature is. Like I learned that when I was, you know, before I was even 20 years old, that you could take someone with a mental illness, take them in the country, put them outside, they would immediately get better. And that's a huge part of my life and my, the teachings that come through me too are very much pointing people towards nature because you got to get away from those thought forms. You know, you got to get away from technology. You know, it, technology is there. It's not imposed on you. You don't have, I mean, if there's a, uh, a TV now on your gas pump, you don't have to look at it <laughs> just because it's there, you know? If there's 5G technology and you're afraid of it, then shut off your phone, your Wi-Fi, and go for a hike. You know, um, it's it's up to us. We have to reclaim our our sanity, our power, and tune into what we want to tune into. And I think that's what you're really getting at here is that what we tune into, and that's essentially what what I can teach people to do when I teach people to channel is the little tricks I've picked up over, you know, the, I've been on this channeling journey for 11 years now, really, because even though I started speaking in 2010, um, in the fall, it was early on in 2010 when I really started to channel and pick up on energies and realize that something was happening that was coming from outside of me. It was, it was obvious. I mean, I, I wasn't, moving my own body in the way that my body was moving. It was doing it by itself. Um, my lips started moving and I started making whispering sounds. I, I had an experience with a huge download of energy coming to me in the middle of the night and just moving through my body over and over. So I knew that something was going on and it helped me. I was already in that world, the channeling world pretty deeply because I was following, um, Esther Hicks and Abraham all over the world. <laughs> I'd go on their cruises and go to their workshops. And before that, I was really into Seth. And I, I just love channeled material. And I did not, did not think it was something that was going to happen to me. And back then, there wasn't a lot of people that I knew of that channeled. So I kind of had to teach myself, which is, which is good because it's made me a better teacher. Very, very interesting. Love that about getting back to nature. That is so important. And when we hear of plant music and the sounds of music from the plants, it's no wonder how nature, every tree is just embracing us and actually lifting us up and healing us. So that's a big do. That's a big do in this whole process. So when you began speaking, can you share with us what that was like for you? Did you judge it? Did you yeah. not believe it? Yeah. <laughs> How did you handle that? These are, the, these are the stages of being a channel. It's like everybody goes through it. Everybody questions it. Uh, the, the greatest channeler of all time, in my opinion, is Jane Roberts. She channeled Seth. Um, the, the Seth material stands up today. It's, it's wonderful. There's, there's dozens of books. She questioned her own sanity when it started happening and, um, you know, and had to like test it to make sure it was real for her. So yeah, questioning and doubting yourself. These are all sort of the stages of becoming a channeler. I think Everyone who um, is really grounded and um, sane will do that. You know, they'll question it and they'll wonder whether it's real and they'll be critical of their own channeling just because it won't have been the first time that they've uh, become aware of some of the things that are coming through them. You know, they may have learned that already through someone else. 
So then it becomes a question of, well, am I just repeating what I already know? Jane Roberts, who channeled Seth. And for my money, she was the best of all time. And she thought that she was going insane at first because she was hearing this voice in her head. And she had to test it and make sure it was real. And so they did all these tests, her and her husband, to make sure Seth was legitimate before they went through with it. You know, and um, I think all all the people that I work with that I teach usually go through that self doubt um, experience as well, to a certain extent. And I went through it. And I luckily by that time, that was a year into my channeling. Now, I had found someone to mentor me and to help me realize that um, it was okay to go through that. There Mentors are. are essential in this process as true guides. All right. And so the the do's and the don'ts of channeling before we get to the why why it's important to channel can you say the do, a, a few do's and don'ts oh absolutely don't use a ouija board even though i think jane roberts and <laughs> her husband did uh use a ouija board but it wasn't recommended and it and it wasn't recommended by seth or it's it's never been recommended by anyone as far as i know to use an instrument, a tool outside of yourself. Um, if you're not raising your vibration to channel, then you're opening yourself up to beings that are of a lower vibration. It has to come because of something that you're doing internally, not because you have the right crystals or the right rife machine or the right, you know, triangular pyramidal structure around you. It's not, I mean, those things can help. Um, maybe once you get going, you could add things to sort of enhance your channeling, but you really, the best thing you could do is just go out into nature and sit under a tree and raise your vibration. Um, so I've seen the, the use of a pendulum to not uh, result in a good channeling for someone getting someone getting a, a lower frequency being um so you don't want to do that you don't they use the pendulum and like a dictionary um so if you focus on raising your vibration you can't go wrong because you're always going to be uh connecting with beings that are also of a higher vibration why is it so important this is like not only higher realms, but it's connection to our higher self. And you said earlier, it's other information, it's off-worldly information. But why is this so important now? Well, we always want to be going further with uh, our consciousness. We always want to be taking humanity, consciousness, society, however you want to look at it, to the next level. We don't just want to repeat what our parents did and said, uh, what their parents did. And otherwise we're not getting anywhere. We're not advancing ourselves. Um, so this is a way to do that. Like I said, people tap in through um, inventing something, you know, they, they get into some higher state somehow and they get something out of the ethers and they pull it down. Um, that has helped us immensely as a species every time that happens. But if your goal as a channeler is to be of service to humanity, then you're going to connect with beings that are also wanting to help us if your goal is just to get information, you know, if it's just to win the lottery, um, you're probably not going to be very successful with it because that's not about advancing uh, us further along on our path. That's just about getting what you want, which is fine. I mean, we all should get what we want and that's part of the, the teachings of the various channeled beings that have come through over time is to help people to live the lives they want to be living. Um, but the 
the intention, the initial intention really should be to help us all to live better lives and have um, a, a more harmonious society, you know, having peace on earth, having everyone have enough food, clothing and shelter and medicine and all the things that they need. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So there how to bring that about, you know, obviously we're arguing over that all the time in, uh, you know, government buildings and elsewhere, <laughs> you know, and um, we don't all need to come to a consensus. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that we need higher frequency ideas. We need things that are not the, the norm to come through people so that there's something new and interesting on the table that maybe appeals to people that are conservative and liberal and anarchist and whatever. <laughs> Hallelujah, absolutely. That's why it is so important. Again, you said higher frequency information, higher frequency ideas. This is our embodiment of the higher self and the expression of new ideas, creative ideas for our planet. It's so wonderful. But I know many are bringing forward peace initiatives and ways to live in peace and harmony in the new earth as we are literally creating that right now. Share with us a little bit about how we begin to channel. First explain what's going on. When we talk about higher level beings, we're actually drawing these higher level beings towards us and then what's happening? It's like um, they're up here and we're here and we meet in the middle. And when notice how I do this with my hands. So when you're meeting in the middle, it's more than just I'm the empty vessel and this information or energy is coming down into me. Um, there's a merging of consciousness that occurs. So you're not just a ventriloquist dummy, you're not just a sock puppet, you are a part of the process. You have to make these words up. So that's why people say, I feel like I'm just making it all up. Well, you are in the sense that you're taking some raw material energy that has a certain intention woven into it, and then you are using language to express it. Now, some people will express it by light language too. And then people will say, well, I don't understand the light language. Well, that's okay because it still has the energy in it. It still has the galactic light codes. It still has everything embedded into it that your mind can't understand. But really what we want here is to go beyond the mind anyway. That's the goal for all of us is to move beyond the limitations of the mind. So um, whatever you're channeling, whether it's tones and sounds, I started channeling tones and sounds I started channeling light language after I started channeling in English. So it was a really weird thing for that to go in that um, order. I would have expected it to be channel tones first, then channel light language, and then channel in English, but it went complete opposite order. It's very interesting because as you were sharing that you started with the speaking first, I've actually taken a class trying to speak channel and I cannot do it, but I can tone. And so that's very interesting and light language yeah, I, I can't bring the words out. What does it feel like with various beings? Do you feel anything in your body? Is there an electricity? Do you feel oh, yeah. the ground? Um, is that, are these some of the indicators that you know something's happening? First thing that ever happened for me was a warm, like, a, like you know when you have water in your ear and then it comes out and you feel that warm sensation? It was almost like that but there was no water. So it was just, just warm, like a, like a hair dryer po pointed at your ear, kind of warm sensation in my, my right ear. Um, but then hands moving by themselves like this over a person's body when I was doing Reiki. Um, so the, that my hands would lift off the person by themselves and then do this. And I would just be like, what is going on? I did, I'm not doing this. And then head, moving like this and then lips moving. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the energy is undeniable. When you see me channel, I'm like this a lot. And 
I'm not doing it. It's just something I'm allowing to happen. This, this mudra, I did not know what a mudra was until my friend Edward, as a yoga instructor, said, you're making a mudra, you know, <laughs> when you channel. <laughs> so um, it, the things happen that, that you're not you're not doing yourself. You're just allowing them to happen. And it evolves over time. What, what the twitches are. There's, a, there's a lot, there's a common one like this. I've seen Esther Hicks do it. I've seen my friend Rob Gothier do it. I still do it sometimes the swivel of the torso, <laughs> but the head moving like this, like Stevie wonder when he sings, it's You're making the infinity symbol with your head. It is causing your right and left hemispheres of your brain to operate as one. Instead of in the brain, there's something called the corpus callosum. It separates the right and left hemispheres of the brain. So people will say, oh, that's very right brain. That's very left brain. But certain things will make those two uh, hemispheres merge, like juggling. Um, uh, and that with doing that with your head. So I find these things out later on after I do them for a long time. And then I'm like, oh, that makes sense why that was happening. <laughs> you bring forward so many beautiful high conscious be beings. You bring forward the consciousness of archangels and ascended masters and galactic beings, fairies and other dimensional beings. When you begin to channel and you call forward the being, do you call forward a specific being and how long does it take to make that connection? I do generally, I have done it without being specific and that has resulted in me channeling the Hathors, the Zetas came through once or twice, a few times um, when it, without intention, the founders came through without my intention um, but for the most part, I've set the intention. I want to tune into this being or this, oh, the Corinthians are another ET race I channeled for a while that, um, I was just, I just kind of put it out there. Hey, I want to channel some beings that I've never heard of. No one's ever heard of that are ET and then boom, they came through. So sometimes that happens. And sometimes I, I point my, my focal point towards, uh, a specific group or entity. And that's, um, that's one way to do it. So there's, there's, you can do it either way and both ways are good. Both ways are fruitful and both ways have their advantages. Being able to focus on something that you already understand the vibration of, for example, Buddha, Jesus, archangels, we've got tons of depictions of them, even in our film and, and television, um, shows you know we've seen the, the depiction of them we've seen the the paintings and and their stories behind them and so they already have a vibration within the collective consciousness that we we have a relationship with so it's easier than to say i'm going to tune to something i already know you know what I mean? Like uh, there are ascended masters out there that people have told me about. And I thought, well, should I channel them? But then I'm like, I have no idea how to even reach for someone that I have no concept of. So if they come to me, they're going to have to come to me by themselves, you know, not because uh, I was trying to aim in that direction because I don't know anything about them and, and what they're like and, you know, what their vibration would be like. Let me ask you about tones. There are some who hear the tones in the ear, ringing in the ear or yeah. different tones. Can you tell us what's going on there? Well, it's not always the same thing every time because I think some people have an implant and that implant could be causing that. I have an implant in this ear that makes me hear um, like a crackling sound of a radio being tuned in sometimes. Um, but I've never experienced the, the ear ringing for more than a few seconds myself, but I do know that it is like trying to get your attention. Um, if you don't resist it, that's, that's really good. So, 
um, tuning into it, maybe uh, trying to match the tone yourself with your with your voice, like like seeing it as an invitation to you know jam together with that sound and make make your own uh, tones with it is a good idea. I think maybe if you match it, maybe that's the key to then having more contact with your guides or whatever beings are um, giving you that experience. What do you do to document your information that you're channeling? Oh, I've done a lot. <laughs> it's all over my website, uh, my Facebook, my YouTube. I've got five books on Amazon, all channeled messages I've done over the past. I've been doing these daily messages for about nine years from different guides at different times. I've been doing the Arcturian Council now for about five. So they're, um, they're all out there. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't keep any of it to myself. <laughs> Thank you for that. That's the key as well. As you're doing this in service to humanity, you're absolutely sharing the information. So that's a large part and you must teach that to your students as well. I know some are shy about that, but that yeah. really is important. It's so important and it is understandable too why people wouldn't want to necessarily be seen and, and put something out there because of past life trauma or even stuff that's happened in this life. But it's also um, just, you know, public speaking is the number one fear, they say, in the world. <laughs> and um, yet here we have this opportunity to share something with people that could be really helpful. So we do have to sometimes face our fears and move uh, past our, our comfort zone to do something that we know is uh, beneficial to not only um, everyone else, but also ourselves. So we place those challenges in front of ourselves for a reason. Let's tune in. Let's have you share a channeled message. Let's see who comes in to speak through you to listeners and viewers to express their higher self? Sure. Um, you asked me earlier, what, like, when am I tuned in? I'm tuned in as soon as I decide I wanna tune in. So what you see at the beginning, most people would, would assume, oh, he's, he's bringing them in. This is what, this is what he does to make this happen. But as soon as I surrender to the energy that I'm channeling, I give over the control of my, my voice and my body, and I can take it back anytime I want. So it's not giving over control like I'm possessed. I can't stop this from happening. I could stop at any time. If I have an itch, I can itch and then go back to. But I just want to explain so, because I think that um, um, if I don't explain it, then everyone assumes, oh, that's what he's doing. So maybe I should do that. No, it's it's what happens when I tune into the energy. The energy moves my, my arm and my hands and makes the sounds you're going to hear at the beginning too, um, which are all channeled and all should be received as part of the channeling and not thought of as, oh, he's making these weird noises now because that's how he gets them. So I just want to be clear about that. <laughs> oh.
perspective on your higher selves. First of all, we know that it is very helpful for you to have an understanding of the truth that you are your higher selves. You are your higher selves playing in this illusion, this dream that says you are something other than your higher selves. And the mission, the purpose of your life is to step out of the dream, out of the illusion and into the reality of yourselves as creator beings, as the ones who are dictating everything that is happening in your life. And as you step into that knowing and that power, you also begin to then know yourself as more than just a singular human being living a single lifetime for a certain time span. You are all of your past life selves put together. You are multidimensional. You are existing across many different parallel universes at the same time. And you are there to integrate all of these aspects of yourself into one harmonious whole, just as the goal for humanity is to live as one harmonious whole in peace with everyone being able to express themselves and be themselves without having to fear anyone harming them in any way as a result. And so, as you look for the reasons that you have for playing small and staying in that more egoic sense of who you thought you have been, and you live a life where you are examining yourself and looking for those opportunities to leave something behind that does make you feel small and insignificant 
then you step more wholly and completely into that true self that you really are, the higher self. You're peeling away the filters, the layers of muck that you've accumulated over eons of time so that you can see clearly who you are and who everyone else is and then do and think and speak accordingly. And so you're wanting that harmony and peace inside of you to then be reflected to you in the outside world. And that's why you're always going to make much more progress going within first and then going and sitting at the table with someone that you have a dispute with, that you want to come to some sort of agreement with. Because first you want to find inner harmony and inner peace. And when you do, you then start to operate from that higher perspective of the higher self that is you, that is the real you. You start to utilize your higher mind. You have access to higher thought. And since you have been talking about channeling here, many people do seek to channel their higher selves. And that is very appropriate. It is appropriate to think of yourself as a being that is choosing between being more egoic or more multidimensional, being your higher self and doing what your higher self would do. So a good way to accomplish this uh, desire is to say to yourself, what would my higher self do or think or say in this situation? And how can I tune into that right now? The answer is usually quite simple. You have to stop operating from your head and start operating from your heart. You have to go within and feel around for what's there, what's present in your heart space. And that's when you know you are using the operating system of the higher self and not of the ego, because the ego will always go back to the mind, to what is limited, to what it can predict, and what is familiar. But you as your higher self are interested in exploring and expanding and becoming more of who you are. And that is the unknown and that's scary to some people, but they will get there with your help, with those of you who are interested in going further and taking humanity to that next level of consciousness. You will be summoning all the ones who want things to stay the way they are, or even go back to an earlier time, and you will bring them forward with you through the gentle invitation of your own expression. Your own light invites them to that experience with you. And those of you who are awake, who are light workers, who are way showers, all you have to do is keep being yourselves and you will bring them along. If you sit down at that table with them right now and try to prove to them that your right or that your way is the better way, then you're only going to get resistance from them. But if they are invited by your energy, your essence, the light that you give off, then it's an entirely different type of invitation and one that's much more appealing. Very good. Is there anything else you would like from us? You have given us a beautiful message and we'd love to really put that into practice. Will, will you make a comment on our global situation for those who are doubtful or curious or fearful of it? Well, it really is something that you all co-created so that you would be more introspective so that you would take the time to 
go within or take time to break the routines that you were in, the cycles of just going to work every day and paying the bills and doing the same things you always do on the weekend. And it's there to get people not only to do that and to realize that it's important to have that time to yourself. And for some people, it's been very hard to just be alone. It's very important to spend less time in your car and in an office building and more time outside and connecting with mother nature and mother earth. But you're also seeing where you're living out of balance in the world and in your lives and where you need more balance, where you need to be taking care of the people who need the most care, the people who have been the most vulnerable, have been the most affected by this pandemic that you're still in the midst of right now. And those are the ones who need more attention to be given to them. And therefore, this has also been something that has given you the opportunity to access more of your compassion for your fellow humans that you might not think of all the time. And when that is reached, when everyone has accessed enough compassion to create a tipping point for humanity, then you won't need to create this anymore and you will find that you move past it. Thank you, we can sense that. Can you share some words on unity consciousness as we develop unity consciousness? What's keeping us from it? Well, what keeps you from it is the idea of this is mine, that this is something that I own. I have the rights to this. It's my intellectual property. I have to patent this or that, and I need to have the credit for everything that I think of or that I invent, I develop. Instead of seeing it as being a citizen of the world, being a member of a human collective, where you know that as you give to the collective, as you put something out there, that you will be automatically taken care of. So it's really something that people need to shift within themselves as a belief system that says, I will be taken care of. I don't need to get all the credit. I don't need to be the one who comes up with all the ideas and then implements them. I can work as a member of a team. I can collaborate. In fact, it's so much more fun to collaborate and someone can take my idea further than I could by myself if we work together. And so when people start to see that, when people start to see the power of coming together and working together, and it really starts to become the overriding principle, the thing that people believe in more than so than they believe in the uh, singular hero, the one person who's going to do it all for everyone, then you'll start to see how a sharing of consciousness, a, a sharing of all that you are with all that everyone else is, is a very good idea. Yes, thank you. We are working towards that. So my last question, would you care to say who is speaking? We are the Arcturian Council. We do not really have a name. We do not really even refer to ourselves as that. We just give you that name so that you know who is speaking through the channel here. But we originated in our system of Arcturus and we evolved and ascended up into a non-physical 
dimension where we all come together in the non-physical. We don't separate at all. We do have different intentions. So there are more than one uh, grouping of Arcturians here in the ninth dimension who have different ideas and perspectives and are working on different things. But it is this ninth dimensional Arcturian Council's objective to help humanity to ascend, to become more of who you are and to feel more empowered. We are the Arcturian Council and we have enjoyed connecting with you. <laughs> Hello. Hello, that was very inspiring. Thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing that through. Yeah. When it becomes the overriding principle, caring for others and compassion, I think that we are so close to that and we're witnessing it happen more and more one heart at a time. So beautiful. Citizens of the world. Yes, yes, yes. Well, you, you know that everyone watching in this channel as well. In fact, it is how we really take humanity to the next level of consciousness. I know so many are on that mission. So how can they learn to channel with you, Daniel? Well, um, I've developed this program um, that makes it easy for people because, you know, there are people all over the world. And even if I set a time and a date for a channeling class or a course, a lot of people will say, oh, I'm asleep or I'm working at that time. I can't make it. So this is a totally downloadable program that people can access various bits and pieces of whenever they like. Um, and there's something for all levels. So if you're starting out as a beginner, out as a beginner, there's a two hour beginners channeling class in there. And then there's an intermediate one and an advanced one. And then there's all these other uh, recordings I've made over the years of meditations, light languages, sound healings, um, other processes besides the ones that are in the courses that people can utilize to help them tap in and channel whoever they're gonna channel. Very, very cool on how it's including light language and how we recognize other beings and how do people begin to bring light language forward? <laughs> um, the reason I'm laughing is because of the way that I did initially. Um, I was getting a massage at the time and <laughs> <laughs> it just started to come out of me and then uh, it, it never stopped. Um, so like every massage I would get, I would just start channeling in light language right away. And I, I kind of like really didn't know what to do with it um, at that time. Um, but it can be used for healing. It can be used for manifestation and it can be used as a sort of bridge to get you to channel in English. So I think that the, answer is the same as it was for how do you channel period you get into a higher frequency state so you do what brings you joy um, and then you sit down and you open up with that intention and you see what happens and if nothing comes through you or if tones come through instead of light language that's fine you know you you did something you you raised your vibration, even if that's all you did was feel energy and you weren't able to speak it in a light language or any other way, that's fine too, because you have to see it all as something that's bringing you closer to being where you want to be with it. Yes, thank you. And it's really interesting here, you've got a transmission. One of the transmissions is light language for your throat chakra and yeah. opening up. Isn't this interesting that um, there's blockages in the throat chakra? Why would that be? Oh, so many reasons. <laughs> um, upbringing. Uh, speak it, you know, don't speak until you're spoken to. Uh, kind of parenting or teach, you know, teachers in the classroom. Um, like I said before, it's the number one fear of public speaking. So we pick up a lot of our fears that uh, come from past lives and just sort of, we bring them with us. Um, 
I had a fear of fire from a very young age, fear that my house was going to burn down. And um, I must have come in with that. No one was implanting that into me. No one was teaching me about it. <laughs> um, so I, I know that people have had experiences with their um, past life selves where that, that version of them was um, persecuted for what they said, imprisoned for what they said, uh, hung, um, whatever happened, you know, because they spoke up or because they tapped into something like the, the witch trials, which were not just in Salem in this, this country, they were all over. Um, so people were tapping in and other people weren't liking it very much. And, um, even Jesus was crucified um, for what he was saying, not what he was doing. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of history there be, be, behind when you speak up, um, you can get yourself in trouble or get ostracized from the community. You know, people aren't always going to want to hear what, what you have to say. So, yeah. All right. All right. So this transmission will help with that. And You've got another light language for activating your channeling chakra. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that one. Well, it's right behind the throat chakra in the back of the neck. Um, another thing that will happen sometimes when I channel is I'll just, without, without even realizing it, I'll be going like this. My head nods forward. So the, the, it's like opening up that, that part of the body uh, the back of the neck when you lean your head forward like that. Um, and it is there to be accessed, you know, it's there like all the other chakras, you, you, you can tune into it and utilize it or be completely unaware of it and not activate it, not, not seek to activate it. And you know, then hopefully something comes along that does, but you know, this is taking a course like mine is about doing these things intentionally and, you know, taking some initiative. And so when you have an activated uh, channeling chakra, then it becomes easier, I think, for everyone to translate what they're getting energetically into words or sounds. Right, so that transmission will activate the channeling chakra. So there's also mantras for activating verbal channeling abilities. How do we work with this? Do we, we just listen to them? Well, the instructions are right in there, um, which is good because with mantras, you do want to know how to use them. You know, it's like if you're just speaking a mantra, but it doesn't resonate it's not it's not shifting anything within you vibrationally then it's not as effective so the creators are the ones i think that um i channeled for that one um because they usually are the ones i bring through for the mantras and they will say that you know you have to resonate with this mantra before you move on to the next one so they'll take you through a process of what you might need to release before you can resonate with it. And then, um, yeah, so one, and then there'll always be some mantras that you resonate with more than others. So those would be the ones you would want to speak more than uh, a few times to get yourself into that state. Well, this is really exciting because you've got beautiful processes for channeling the Arcturians, higher dimensional beings, channeling chakra opening, upgrade and activation as well, breathing exercises. And what I love as well, Daniel, is that the toning that you brought forward, there were overtones that were very interesting <laughs> and those were activating in themselves. And you've got a transmission for inducing the channeling state. Tell us about that one. Well, that's something I learned from other people like I said, people, um, some people understand that the toning is something to pay attention to when it's happening. And those that do get the value of toning uh, told me uh, that my toning was inspiring them to channel. Like it was 
putting them into that state. So that's what then got me to say, oh, I can make this into a recording then and put it up on my website. And I did and then include it in this course um, to, you know, tones and sounds are very effective when there's intention that you place into them because then the intention is held and it will always carry, the sound will always carry that intention. So then all you have to do is, you don't have to make the tones, um, you have to try to match them because they're meant to activate you. And so you're just letting all of the sounds wash over you as you listen and then just wait. <laughs> just wait, beautiful. All right, well, this course is comprehensive. You have the beginners group channeling class, the intermediate group channeling class, and the advanced group channeling with a lot of activations and processes for various beings and archangels that we can use to create new earth. I love this. It is beautiful and we thank you for it. The link to this course is right here on this webpage. Daniel, thank you so much for sharing this wisdom and really assisting those. I can really sense this mission to be a service to humanity, to take it to the next level of consciousness. So as we say goodbye, anything else you'd like to share on that and everyone's mission? Yeah, your voice is needed. I, I want to see more channelers out there. Um, I want to see what you're going to channel and what everyone else is going to channel because I have been doing this for a long time now and um, I, uh, fresh voices, fresh perspectives are needed. You know, we, we need more people sharing this information because we need to hear things over and over and over again to reprogram ourselves out of the thinking that we were raised in and the thinking that still is out there and being broadcast on all those screens for the most part. So the more people there are putting out something that is very positive and very life affirming and empowering, the easier it will be for all of us to rise up and shift our consciousness. Yes. Well, thank you for being that guide for anyone who wants to learn how to channel you really are a beautiful service dude in that sense and we thank you for it yes we are inspiring new earth inspiring others to get wildly creative the time is now so thank you daniel you're welcome my pleasure Thank you for listening to this quantum conversation and thank you for dancing with us to the cosmic heart. As we raise our own vibration, we raise the vibration of the planet. This show is dedicated to you and all awakening hearts as we are here to shine our bright light and amplify our love. Access all quantum conversations, special offers from our guests, and online healing retreats by visiting AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and from my sacred heart to yours, I honor your magnificent love and light. We leave you now with music from the universe. Music literally created by the universe as musical notes were assigned to mathematical equations. The result is this beautiful music available at AcousticHealth.com. Namaste.